for Starstruck. exciting evening already uh, and I was uh, sitting there thinking uh, I can't imagine that people are still up for hearing uh, a talk yes! <laughs> Our resource and organizing committee for inviting me to participate in the 10th or 11th anniversary <laughs> celebration. Um, and I thank Laura Kislani and all of the other organizers in uh, AROC. Uh, it's been especially an honor to um, join my sister, Nadine Naber, uh, who was such a perfect example of. Of, of the scholar activists uh, and a model for upcoming um, young activist scholars. I should say that I was especially impressed by uh, Nadine's leadership of the Razmir Oday campaign. And while unfortunately we did not win the unqualified victory that we wanted in the campaign to free Razmir Oday. So many people were moved by that struggle, and we continue to be inspired by Razmir's work in the Middle East and in Europe. As a matter of fact, I recently met with a group of students in Amsterdam who had been deeply moved by her visit uh, there and by the ensuing struggle to defend Razmir's right to speak. I'm a longtime resident of Oakland. My first two residencies in the Bay Area were jail cells, I should say. But I have, um, I have been in Oakland since the immediate aftermath of my trial in 1972. So I'm really happy to be here among supporters of uh, Iraq, who have contributed to important wins, as, as you've seen in the Bay Area camp in Bay Area campaigns, campaigns that that have global uh, ramifications. And I should mention that being a long-time resident uh, of Oakland and the Bay Area, I have uh, witnessed and participated in many of the. Uh, eras of organizing about which uh, Nadine spoke earlier. And I, I, I remember the uh, organizations of Arab youth and Arab student organ organizations on the campus at UC Berkeley, uh, for example. Uh, and so I think it's always important to uh, uh, bring up those memories because uh, uh, those memories um, help to generate a promise for the future. The Block the Boat campaign, uh, that was so impressive. Uh, uh, Iraq uh, uh, members, the radical members of the International Longshore uh, and Warehouse uh, Workers Union, uh, thank you all for proving that the representatives and supporters of the state of Israel are not invulnerable. Are not invulnerable. ILWU workers who refused, as you heard, to unload South African ships during the apartheid era, who also shut the docks down as a call for the freedom of Mumia Abu Jamal. And now, Israeli ships have been turned away from the port of Oakland. 
thank you so much for your work demonstrating that the BDS strategy can indeed work. a little bit about BDS, but first let me add my congratulations uh, to, to all of you who participated in the important campaign uh, to stop Urban Shield. The coalition to stop Urban Shield, um, led by AROC, Critical Resistance, and all of the other organizations that, that were mentioned, um, sent a message out to people all over the world, a message that sustained grassroots activism can indeed make a difference. It is people like us who will ultimately change this country and the world. And I thank AROC for recognizing this and for motivating people to continue even at moments when the prospects of victory seem to be very sparse. In this case, of course, you ultimately persuaded the majority of the Alameda County Board of Supervisors to vote to end their support of these war games that are designed to guarantee the further militarization of the police. The official presence of Israel who can, of course, claim the most successful merger of the armed forces and the police in the world. The official presence of Israel has made it clear that this issue, this local issue, has global ramifications. The campaign helped us to understand that the problem of racist police forces in the U.S. is not one that can be solved simply by singling out the so-called racist police officers. But of course, it is important to guarantee that police officers who engage in these acts of racist violence be brought to justice. Uh, and I'm thinking right now of the case of Jason Van Dyke, who is the Chicago policeman who killed Laquan McDonald shooting him 16 times and of course the knife which was uh, which caused the police to claim self-defense was found un was found completely closed but anyway jason van dyke is is currently on trial in chicago he's one of the only white police officers to have ever been charged with the with the murder of a black person and let me say that this is an important case, yet we know that the source of racist violence is not so much in the individuals who are its perpetrators, but rather in the very structures of policing. Yeah. And that struggles against the militarization of the police, such as in the case of Stop Urban Shield, recognize that ultimately only an abolitionist approach to policing can foresee and ultimately eradicate the racism, the misogyny, the homophobia, the class bias that are deeply entrenched in the very structures of policing. So thank you, Iraq, for helping us to better understand this crucial issue. when we are involved in struggles to change our worlds, we forget how that as important as it may be to want to achieve full victories, it is equally important to celebrate the seemingly small achievements. Because we have to demonstrate to ourselves that the work we do matters, that it matters for history, that it matters for the future, and it also matters for the small changes that are produced in the lives of people who suffer the most. It is important to remember that even if we do not achieve the victories that we know are central to 
justice and radical visions of the future, socialist visions of the future, at least we can keep our radical ideas alive. Our work can contribute to the survival of struggles that will carry these ideals forward. And this is precisely the work that, that AROC does. This is also the importance of the black radical tradition. Not so much that it is responsible for achieving racial justice in the world, but that it has helped us through politics, through culture, to hold on to the possibility of freedom. The pairing of Palestinian and black struggles is not serendipitous. The meaning of our defense of justice in Palestine has to do with the refusal of Palestinians the refusal of Palestinians to capitulate in face of the most powerful efforts to eradicate their place in history. In the 70 years since the Nakba, Palestinians have not given up. They have not given up their struggle for their land, their homes, for democracy, and for freedom. they represent the, the promise and the hope for freedom to people all over the planet. I recently participated in a conversation with um, anti-racist trainer Jane Elliott at the University of Houston. Um, and the conversation was around racism. And I can tell you that I was, happily, I was happily surprised when the audience erupted in sustained applause and cheers the most of the entire conversation when I pointed out that it is impossible today to speak about struggles against racism directed at black the racism directed at black communities in the U.S. without talking about the movement against the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And, you know, I was sort of caught off guard because this was Texas. You know, I was in Houston, Texas. And people just about went crazy. Um, and uh, Texas, remember, is one of the states that under the corrupt and backward-leaning direction of the Trump administration has passed a law that prohibits all state agencies, including universities, from contracting with companies that boycott Israel. Now, as it turns out, there are about 25 states, uh, including California, that have passed similar resolutions. Uh, uh, and when I was actually looking online for information about this, a uh, petition popped up regarding Jerusalem as belonging only to the Jewish people, and asking, asking me, <laughs> to sign the petition. <laughs> wow. The point that I want to make is that the effort to discredit the BDS movement is a testament to its success. We know how powerful the global Zionist lobby has been, but this has got to be a low point. It, these laws uh, are reminiscent of the uh, McCarthyite loyalty oaths that academic and other institutions uh, insisted that their employees sign in the 1950s. Uh, the oath 
of no affiliation with communist organizations then has become an oath against the boycott of the state of Israel today. I interpret this not as a strength of the Trump administration and its uh, unprecedented support of Zionism, but rather as a sign of its weakness. Just as the McCarthy-era loyalty oaths were ultimately removed, the global movement for Palestinian justice will certainly ultimately prevail. That the state of Israel has passed a new law proclaiming that Israel is the nation state of the Jewish people has sent out the message to people around the world, including to those who have previously supported Israel, that Israel is now defining itself as an apartheid state. As a state that reserves the most important rights and liberties to a group defined by religion. And this is, of course, totally anathema to democracy. That only Jews have the right to self-determination. That Muslims and other Palestinians do not have the right to return to their homeland. This only underscores the racist and anti-democratic nature of the state of Israel. And of course, increasing numbers of Jews recognize, recognize this, um, um, it, the extent to which Israel is openly racist and anti-democratic, and are disassociating themselves from the policies and practices of Israel. And some are even al actively aligning themselves with the cause of Palestinian justice. So I want to conclude by thanking Iraq for promoting um, cross-movement struggle intersectional struggles, uh, and especially here in the Bay Area. Uh, the Bay Area is a very special place. You know, we're very fortunate uh, to, uh, to live here. I mean, I, w I was listening to Clarence Thomas, and I was saying, you know, this is, it, it, it's very important to live in a place where the political culture has been established going back to the 1930s. Uh, now, by a radical labor union. But also because in the Bay Area, um, feminism, um, radical women of color feminism has been a powerful force over the last decade. And so I'd like to thank AROC for representing anti-racist feminism, not as a special interest, but rather as an emancipatory strategy for people of all racial, gender, sexual backgrounds. An abolition, an abolition feminism, an abolition feminism defined by radical women of color, an anti-capitalist feminism, that recognizes that water is a human right from Flint to Standing Rock to Kenya to the shooting of Palestinian water tanks by the Israeli military. A queer feminism that recognizes that struggles against xenophobia and specifically against the incarceration of undocumented people advance our abolitionist campaign to end the prison industrial complex in the So this is an anti-racist, anti-Zionist, anti-imperialist, radical socialist practice that calls for the kind of democracy that can move us toward the future of our dreams. 
Thank you.